The Pharisees brought a woman to Jesus who was caught in the act of adultery. Immediately, we notice a double standard that the Pharisees had, bringing this woman in to be condemned. But the man was not criticized. They also brought just the woman, trying to play Jesus' compassion, hoping to make him fall into their trap. The Pharisees asked Jesus what should be done with this woman, telling him, in front of all the people present, what Moses told them to do, which is to stone her. They were trying to get Jesus to publicly disagree with Moses, thus trying to prove that Jesus was not even a prophet, for Moses was the greatest of the Jewish prophets in their eyes. The Psalms had said about Jesus, Ride on and reign because of the word of truth, of meekness, and of righteousness. St. Augustine explains the saying, As a teacher, he brought truth. As a deliverer, he brought gentleness. As an advocate, he brought righteousness. Jesus does not contradict Moses, because the law of Moses had come from the pre-eternal word of God. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear them. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Jesus' finger was the same finger in the Old Testament that wrote the laws of the Ten Commandments on the stone tablets. St. Augustine explains, he wrote with his finger on the ground as if indicating that the names of people like these men were to be written in earth, not in heaven. St. Jerome explains that Jesus was writing the sins of the accusers in the ground, fulfilling Jeremiah 17, 13, those who depart from you shall be written in the earth. The Pharisees knew better than to stand there and say that they have never sinned, so they all left, leaving the woman alone with Jesus. The title, Son of David, means the Messiah, because the Messiah, or Christ, was to come from the lineage of David. Jesus had just cured many people, but now that he had healed the demoniac, they were wondering if he is really the Messiah. Many had claimed to be the Messiah before, but mostly by trying to overthrow the Romans, which is what the Jews were looking for in a Messiah. The Pharisees accused Jesus of being a demon himself, and casting out demons in his own name. The Talmud, a book put together centuries after Jesus' resurrection by Jewish rabbis, claims that Jesus was a demon-possessed sorcerer. Jesus says, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. Jesus condemns their logic. He then proceeds to ask them how their own people cast out demons, since they think that the only way to cast out demons is by being a demon. This, of course, upsets the Pharisees even more. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus says this to mean that he is not coming to destroy the Romans, but the demons, who are the true rulers of this world. And that he is destroying demons, he is taking over the world, and hence the kingdom of God has now come. Jesus is binding Satan in order to come in and establish the kingdom of heaven. Jesus then tells the Pharisees that if they are against his side, the side that is destroying the demons, then they are working with the demons. Years later, one particular Pharisee, Saul, who becomes the holy apostle Paul, realizes that he was fighting against the very God whom he loved and changes his way. Therefore I say to you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven men. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, either in this age or the age to come. This is truly a scary saying of the Lord, that there is a sin that is unforgivable. Jesus says this because the Pharisees said that Jesus' Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit, is the devil. Jesus is saying that this is the one sin that he cannot save them from, fighting against God. They can repent during this lifetime, as St. Paul did, but if they continue in this manner, they will not be saved. Jesus, in trying to correct the Pharisees, calls them a brood of vipers. Jesus still loves even them, and is trying to get their attention and convert their hearts. The tax collectors at least acknowledge that they are sinners, but the scribes and Pharisees did not even realize how far from God they really were. By being harsh on the scribes and Pharisees, Jesus wins a few of their hearts, people like Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. However, the majority remain stubborn. We know that Jesus is all-loving, and sometimes 
Being harsh with the ones we love is the loving thing to do. It would lack love to just ignore them and walk away. The scribes and Pharisees then asked Jesus to perform a miracle to prove that Jesus had this authority. Jesus responds saying an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. Nineveh was about the most evil place on earth during the time when God sent Jonah there. Jonah told the Ninevites that God was going to destroy their city in three days. The people did not ask him for a sign, but immediately began to repent. Jesus is telling the scribes and Pharisees that they are even worse than the Ninevites, who are notoriously evil people. Jesus continues, The Queen of the South will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. The queen of Ethiopia came all the way from her country to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Yet Jesus is greater than Solomon, and the Jews would not even listen to him. Jesus is trying to save the Jews, but their hearts are hard, and they are not listening to him. Every time Jesus refers to this wicked generation, he's referring back to a quote from the book of Deuteronomy, which they are very familiar with. He's reminding them that their ancestors died in the wilderness, and they who have not fallen far from their ancestors will have the same fate if they do not listen.